Okay, I'm at the 90,000 mile mark, so I'm gonna change up this serpentine belt. Serpentine belt sits way down inside of there, but you're gonna get to it through here. Like I said, you gotta take your cover off, you gotta get this little air box off with a flathead screwdriver. Should open up enough space. Might have to take this air duct off right here because the tensioner is sitting right down in there and we gotta get there. So let's start taking all this stuff off right here. Super simple, you just pop this cap up, pop that up. Cause these are the little pieces that's holding it in, these little rubber grommets here. So if you can get these little nodules, there's like little caps that go inside of there, pull those off, pops this cap straight off, sit that to the side. Let's get this air box off here. Like I said, Phillips screwdriver or flathead, my bad, my bad. You know what I'm talking about, don't mess with me. Pull up for a second, get that off. All right, make sure you undo, there's a wiring harness that's connected to it and you can pop it off. There's a little piece on the side you can pop off here or you can just unsnap it. Push this little snap off here. Gotta back that snap off. So you back that off a little bit so it allows you to push the clamp down and pull it out. There we go right there. So that little air box piece is off. Just pull that straight up. You pop this up, because it just fits inside of this little groove here. It fits in rubber grommets. Pull it straight up, because what I want to do, like I said, I've never done it on this car before, but hey, it's a car. Um, all right, now I can move this kind of over right here. There's a little notch sitting right here. I'm gonna sit this on that side of the notch, because I can't get the bottom off. There's a clamp holding that piece on there. So you can't take the bottom one off, just leave it there. But now I'm looking down in here, and I can see my tensioner and all my stuff right there, which is perfect. So you got these little plastic caps, these little plastic notches that hold this um the cover on. So I'm gonna get my screw, my flathead in there, kind of scooch them a little bit. And this is what I'm talking about, these here. So what it is, this is pushed in like this. You just get the flathead screwdriver, fit it in between here, pry it apart like this. I'm gonna pry that apart like this, just kind of rock it back and forth real lightly so you don't break the tab, slides right up. And it looks like I got one, two. Yeah, let me let me grab the camera and show you what I'm talking about. So there they are right there. There'll be one here. I just took that one out. There's the number two is right here. You can see that one right there. And then Three. Oh, where's three? Three is all at the bottom, straight down through here. Okay, so this is how it sits on the engine, like this. And you got that little hole up there. That'll be one of the little plastic tabs. That'll be a plastic tab. Then there's one straight down here, and there's one right over here. So you got four plastic tabs. And in the center, that's where the wiring harness goes. You just pop that wiring harness out. It's real easy. Just pull it, pops right out. But you got four of those little plastic tabs. That tab right there. I used a short screwdriver to get to. Like I said, your hand can fit down in there, no problem. You don't even have to remove that piece right there. So your hand slides right down in there just like this. Like I said, let me see if I can do it. Like I just slid my hand right down in here like this, and that's how I got to the tabs. I got to this one on this side, then I got to that one on that side, and got the tabs out. Like I said, it's not hard at all. Like, super easy, you got four. Now, as you walk up to the engine, you can look and you can see the tensioner. The tensioner has this little and right here on it. That's your tensioner right there. What you're gonna do is, I think that's probably about a 15 millimeter. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go grab something. And it looks like you're gonna crank it to the right. Like you're gonna tight it. Like you're gonna tighten it up. And what that should do is kind of pull some of the tension off of that tensioner so you can kind of pop that belt off with your finger. So let me see if we can get that done. Actually, a 16 millimeter fits perfectly on it. So I'm gonna use my 16 millimeter and I'm gonna use my breaker bar. And I'm just gonna crank it a little bit and she'll get it right off. Okay, you're gonna get it as low as you can go, then crank it to the right a little bit. As soon as you crank it to the right, it releases some of the tension. I pulled it off my water pump in the center, let it down, you're good to go. And this is the, what I did. Like I said, I, I cranked it, like you can see right there. Wait a minute. Okay, so that's where I was cranking on right there. That, you're gonna crank that to the right because when you crank it to the right, the wheel drops down. As the wheel drops down, the belt gets real loose. 
and you just unhook it from right here. This is where I'm unhooking it from. All I, it was right up under the bottom. I just slid it with my finger like this, whoop, came right off. Here's the belt right here. Like I said, I could take the whole belt back off. Make sure you remember how to get that thing on there because you've got to reroute it. I mean, it's routed all the way up here, up around the alternator and everything. So I remember how, and it's around the water pump too, way back there, or the, not the water pump, but the um, ah, AC compressor. And now we're kind of stuck. Because you know what? We've got to get it from around that bracket right there. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, so there's this big piece right here. Wait a minute. There's this big piece right about here. This thing here. We've got to unhook this and get that belt off. Now, once you get the belt off, you're going to realize you can't get it off because of this little water pump. This is part of the cooling system right here. It's not a water pump, just part of the cooling system. But there's a bolt on the other side, like a little 10 millimeter over here. I used a, um, like a little wrench, and you get that little small bolt off. That's all it is, like a little nut right there. And there's like a, a retainer clip. This little retainer clip wraps around here. So you're going to pull this piece off, because you can see me like as I pull it off. And now I got some leeway. Because what I want to do is get this piece to move so I can get that belt from wrapped around it. Whoops, let me, this thing is, yeah, so now I can move it now. So I want to get this kind of out of this retaining clip so I can get my belt, my serpentine belt around it and out of the engine. So now, as you can see, I got this little retainer piece right here. It can move freely now. It's got a rubber, like a little rubber um, bushing that goes around this cooling system part. But once you secure this bracket from that, you can pull the, the coolant part out the way and now you can get the belt from around it. You just kind of work the belt like this around here. I'm working around. You pull it back through the housing this way. Wait a minute. Skirt. And now I'm right about here, which is there's a um wasn't it like there's a uh, wire right there. There's a so what I got to do is move that wire out the way cuz it's sitting on a Look like a little retainer clip right there. So once I get this little retainer clip out the way, then I can pull it off. Okay, now I got that clip off. There's the clip right there. And see what it does is it goes like right around this little metal piece here. And all you do is you just pull it. You just got to pull it hard enough because it's got like some little shark bite looking teeth in there because it kind of latches on. So just pull it as hard as you can. As soon as you pull it, you get the belt free. There's my old belt. So now it's time to put the belt back on and then I'm going to start locking everything back up. I'm going to put everything back together and kind of show you how to put it together because getting it apart, I think I was learning with you, but I kind of figured it out now. So at 90,000 miles, you can kind of see how worn out that one is. Like I said, it's still got, you can kind of see some of the letters a little bit, but it's just like, ah, eh, it's pretty worn out. It's about time to swap it out. 90,000 miles, let's go. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to show you how to put this belt back on. Uh, but like I said, remember the last piece you're gonna put on is the water pump because that was the first piece you plucked off. So we're gonna have to work this back around here again. Okay, go back around here. Uh, get it back up under here like that. Then this piece is gonna go around like this. Cause like I said, we got to get it back around that uh, coolant system housing piece. So now that I got it around that, I wish I could show you better. So now it's around my coolant system piece right now. Like I said, it's it's I had to work it back around. Now it's worked around, so I can wrap this back around my uh, AC compressor. This here's my tensioner way over here, but. It has to go up first. It goes from AC compressor up to the alternator. So I got to get it up around this alternator first. So now that it's up around my alternator, I work it back down and under that tensioner. Because remember, we had to push that tensioner down. So, and a lot of times this is going to be hell trying to line this stuff up because you don't have the belt tight right now. So I'm lining it right up and under. Okay, uh, let's see, I know I'm around this tensioner. 
I'm not around this tensioner yet. Okay, now I'm around that tensioner right there. So it goes under this water pump here. Then it comes all the way around. We've got the crankshaft at the very bottom. So it goes across the top of the crankshaft. And I'm right where I could start working with my tensioner. Uh, I hate when that shit happens. Damn watch. Hold up for a second. Sometimes my arms get too big to certain areas I'm putting in. All right, bet. I've worked with that watch on for years. BMWs are little, man. What the hell? I ain't never had to take my watch off to work. Whatever. So I got everything wrapped around. So I got it around the back of my uh, AC compressor. I got it around the top of my, uh, damn it, alternator. Wrapped around a tensioner like this. It goes around a tensioner this way. So once it goes around the tensioner this way, it goes around the tensioner straight under the water pump. And it's going to wrap around the uh, crankshaft pulley like this. But before it can wrap around the crankshaft pulley, I've got to loosen up the tensioner because right now it's got too much tension on it. So what I do, remember, to kind of get it back like this, then you kind of crank the tensioner up and to the right. You crank your thing up and to the right. Now, come on, damn it, you're almost there. Wait a minute. Well, I got to get this thing wrapped around my AC pulley right. Okay, now it's around my AC pulley right. I mean, this belt is like right at the the limit of what it can do. So if you don't have it on right, you'll know because it will not go on. So now it's completely on my... It's on my AC compressor. It's in every single groove because if you got it around the edge right here, it's not going to work because it's going to be... You don't have enough room to get it around that crankshaft pulley. And so it's secured on there. It's on every piece of my alternator. It's wrapped around my tensioner perfectly. It's wrapped around my water pump perfectly. It's on the grooves of the crankshaft pulley perfectly. I always put my hand up under the bottom to make sure it's not on the very inside. Nope, everything's perfect. So the belt's on perfect. And now it's just a process of just, I like to wipe stuff down a little bit while I'm in here. Make it look nice, yeah. Look at that, nice brand new black wheels. All these pulleys look good. Okay, wipe everything down. Because now what I want to do is, because I got all this back together, I can now put my coolant system piece back together. So slide this back to where it was. Make sure you get that piece locked on. And don't forget your little bolt here. You got this little 10 millimeter. I'm going to work this thing on right here. So now the 10 millimeter is on there. I'll crank that down in a second. I got a better wrench in the trunk. Hold up. Okay. Just my little ratchet. A little ratchet 10 millimeter right here. Call him a little ratchet chick. Hold up for a second. Uh, if you got big hands, make sure you put a towel like this to keep your arms from being cut the fuck up. Yeah, now that feels a lot better. Like I said, that's just that little 10 millimeter bolt that holds that uh, bracket in place. The coolant bracket's in place, and this is that little piece. You just pop that back on that little, it's like a little ledge it sits on. Push that back in place. You're good to go. Well, let me show you. All right. So, whoops. So that's what I was talking about right there. So that's my little 10 millimeter bolt sitting over there. See that little 10 millimeter down there? That's that one, center of the screen. Get that on there because that latches that little hinge bracket around that coolant piece. And then like I said, and that's your, that wire right here, that's what I had to just push back on it. Cause like I said, this is one you just pull it off like, uh, you just pull it like that. Cause it's got these little shark bite teeth in it. Then once you're done, you just click it back on there like this you're done but you got to get those off in order to get the damn belt off because if you don't get those off out of the way the belt's going to be sitting on there and there's my belt all wrapped in there pretty nice and tight so the belt's all good to go and like i said next i just got to put my 
that piece right there back on, put that cover back on. And once I put the cover back on, I can start linking everything back together. Okay, and there's my cover back on right there. And it's got the little wire snapped in. Like I said, you just push it back in. But all four of my pieces are on there. You just line up the top two. Once you line up the top two, the bottom two are easy. Okay, I pretty much got everything wiped down. Like I said, I even wiped down like the turbo accessories and stuff like that. All the little components of the turbo. But make sure when you're hooking up this box right here, your air box, link it to that air hose right there. Because that's coming from the front. That's helping you get more air. That right there. That's going to help you get more air into this turbo system. So make sure that opening right there fits on there when you put this all back together. Like I said, I'm about to do my oil change. I got a video for that already. If you don't know how to do your oil change or your spark plugs, I've got videos for all that. Hey, good luck with the belt, y'all. Okay, there it is. Engine all back together. Everything looks good. Don't forget to hook up your mass airflow sensor. You got to hook that up before you start it or else the engine won't be able to meter everything. And don't forget to screw in your little uh, flathead screw right there. Get that in. Like I said, it's. I think it's time to go. Ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to start. Well, I got to change the oil first. Let me change the oil, then I'll start it. Wipe the engine. Wait a minute. I think I missed a spot. Hold up. Okay, so I just finished with the oil change. Like I said, the belt was on earlier. Let's start this thing up real quick. Um, let's see. My hood's open. Woo, nice and quiet. It says service overdue 300 miles. I'll show you how to reset that. Like I said, that's like the uh, oil change light. So I'm gonna show you how to reset that in a second. Nice and quiet, no squeaking. Like I said, before I changed the belt, it would squeak. Every time I would start it, it'll go. You can hear it squeaking pretty bad. But like I said, it sounds quiet, no squeaks at all. I don't have to put any belt dressing on it to kind of quiet it down. Because I was doing that for a while. I would drive, and if I'm like out and about taking people around, I would hear it squeak. I would put a little belt dressing on it, and it would stop it just for probably about an hour. And that's how I knew it was time to swap the build out. So now there's no squeaking at all. Pretty quiet.